So today we are celebrating uh, the Rath Yatra ceremony. Jagannath Rath Yatra Mahotsav Ki. This is the <coughs> wonderful ceremony of the Lord. When he goes out on his rock, Thank you. The Lord goes out on his rock for his annual ride. Uh, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will go and observe this festival, Adhyatiyatra, with all the devotees. And in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would reveal the what is the me actual real meaning of the of Ratiyatra? And of course, in different times it changes. Because there's different kings come, different dynasties come, they conquer Puri and then they introduce their systems of worship. Like when the Ganapatyas were ruling there, the Ganapati became, Jagannath became the Ganapatya. When the Shaktas are in power there, they, they, they worship uh, Subhadra Devi. Prominent, she becomes prominent. So different features that the Lord exhibits. Uh, these are all kind of inconceivable to us, but the Lord goes along with it. Lord Jagannath's coming from Satya Yuga. And yeah, he goes along with all these different changes that are inevitable due to time. So, at this particular period when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, then he and Mahaprabhu is revealing that, especially for, uh, for the Radha Krishna Bhaktas, uh, uh, through Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, through his dealings with Lord Jagannath and his expressions and feelings, uh, as Sri Mata Radharani, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is half Radharani, half Krishna. So in the half of Radharani, he is experiencing what is Radharani experiencing in her love for Krishna. He, he couldn't realize that as Krishna, so he adopted the form of uh, and emo the, or the emotions of Sri Mata Radharani. <coughs> in the form of a bhakta. Uh, so he could experience what his bhaktas experience, especially the greatest bhakta, Sri Mata Radharani. <coughs> uh, so like this, then he was he was sharing it and expressing himself to Lord Jagannath when they were pulling the rat, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Radharani would uh, sing different songs and refrain to it. And uh, uh, so like this, Rupa Damodar was there, and Rupa Goswami, uh, uh, Rupa Goswami, and uh, others. Uh, they could, few could understand what he was saying, uh, especially Rupa Goswami. He broadcast it. Rupa Damodar also understood, but he didn't broadcast it. But Rupa Goswami, he broadcast it. He let us know the the internal meanings and feelings of. Uh, what is the love of that the Prajabhashis have for Krishna? What kind of emotions uh, they are going through? So, if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't come and do this, we would have very little understanding of what is actually Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan. And uh, because the, the theme of pulling Jagannath on the rat is pulling him back to Vrindavan. Uh, and Jack and I come to behold the group. Vrindavan Jabu, Vrindavan Jabu, let's go to Vrindavan. Take Jack and I to Vrindavan. <clears throat> so that means they want him to come to Vrindavan. But uh, so it's in the mood of separation. So Shaitan Amapa was showing this love in, in the mood of separation which he came to taste and show. <laughs> so, uh, 
so Chaitanya personally managed the whole kirtan parties. He, he split them up into different groups with lead singers, the lead padranga players, 14 kartal players, seven, seven groups, seven groups I believe. He's, and he, then he split himself into seven Chaitanya Mahaprabhus and went in each party and was dancing with everyone in the world. He really likes our party, he never leaves. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very merciful. A few people could understand what was going on. So this is his uh, complete mercy, just as he expands himself on the Ras, Maharas, to be with every gopi. Or at the Julan, he expands himself and sits on the Julan with all the gopis. So similarly at the Rat Yatra, in the Kirtan, he would divide himself into seven and seven Kirtan parties he was dancing with simultaneously. Uh, so that is Sri Vashangam. Uh, uh, so now I'm proper, I think the, uh, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not trying to appear from the Sri Vashanga, this is like Krishna's Rasalika. Yes, now you're making some remarks from. Uh, so this was the. Uh, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu expands himself and to perform all these wonderful pastimes and he needs to go to this direct uh, association also with him. <clears throat> so, I'll read something from Chaitanya Tamrita, just to hear it expressing it here. Uh, the emotions. Oh, I'm not sure I'm running. Pardon? Mike. Chapter 13, the Lord's dancing at the Rath Yatra. Jaya Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Gauda Chandra Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gauda Bhakta Brinda <laughs> so, even when Lord Chaitanya wanted to dance with the devotees, then all the groups were combined together and let Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dance alone in the, the center. And uh, then Mahaprabhu, he, uh, he also had one, the others who organized the persons who would catch him, they'd run along behind Mahaprabhu because he would leap up and he would just sometimes fall anywhere. So there's always devotees running, ready to catch him. <clears throat> and he's performing this astonishing dance. He liked to jump very, very high. This is one of his features of his dancing. So then offering obeisances uh, uh, to Lord Jagannath, Lord uh, Mahaprabhu raised his face towards Jagannath and prayed as follows. Namo Brahmanaya Devaya Go Brahmanaya Ocha Chakritaya Krishnaya Go Pindaya Namo Namaha Very famous Nam mantra of Krishna and different different mantras that the devotees, they like to chant these mantras that Lord Chaitanya chanted in Rathyatra. So you, if you ever, you can chant them also when you see Chagana. Namo Brahmanaya Deva, Jayati Janani Vasho Deva Ki Janma Bhav. Uh, 
No humbicho, not a putty, not vice, and also I'm not a Brahman, I'm not a Kachra, I'm not a vice, I'm not a Sutra, I'm not a Sanyasi, I'm not a Grihasa, I'm not a Banapras, I'm not a. One more. Ah, I identify myself only as Gopi Pariyotamalo Das, as a servant of the servant of the servant, the Sri Krishna, who maintains the Gopis. So here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was giving us our identity as followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is giving us our identity that we are the servant of the servant, the master of the gopis. Master means not gopis. So gopi not. Gopi not is our ish the deva. Our identity is servant of the servant of gopi not. So is your ultimate worshipper logic? Is gopi not. So now we know our identity. Now we can serve. We serve Krishna in different forms, but ultimately Gopinath is our Ishtadeva. <clears throat> so having recited from all these different scriptures, the Lord again offers his obeisances and all the devotees with folded hands also offer the prayers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing, it was like a firebrand. He would go round and round and spin round in circles. If you have a firebrand, a stick with a, some kind of spark on top, and you you wheel it around, it looks like one continuous circle, but it's actually it's not. It's just one little spark, but they all join together. So Mahaprabhu was like that. He would spin around, and it looked like just one firebrand. Uh, and wherever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dance and put his feet, it felt like the earth was shaking, the hills were shaking, <laughs> everything, the whole universe was shaking. <clears throat> and so sometimes he would fall down in ecstasy, look like a golden ball. <laughs> his, his body complexion was golden, top to consciousness, you know. molten gold. Molten gold, you cannot capture that color. Because when gold is molten, it's liquid. It's red hot also, so it's glowing. The gold is there, but it's liquid and it's glowing. So you cannot catch that molten gold color. Because it's only when it's melted, when it's hot, you've got the glow coming through. The gold is there and the, the red glow of, of fire is coming through. So you can never catch catch that in, in the metal. Because that glow is not the But in Mahaprabhu and Radharani and others, they have that complexion and it, the glowing emanates from it also. <clears throat> and the, uh, the king was also there, Maharaj Prataparudra, Uh, and uh, while the king was beheld the dancing, Sri Thakur, standing in front of him, became ecstatic as he saw the dancing of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Seeing Sri Thakur standing before the king, Hari, Hari Chandana touched Sri with his hand and requested him to step aside. Like for the Prabhupada disciples, and <laughs> someone comes up and says, hey, pushes everyone, they wonder, what, what am I doing? You're pushing me away. <laughs> uh, so he asked him, he's like that, he was pushing him, he gets sent to the side, you know, the king is here, the king, big man. Absorbed in watching Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu down, Sri Vastaka could not understand why he was being touched and pushed. He was again and again pushed and he became angry. Sri Thakur then he slapped Harishanda to stop him from pushing him. This, this in turn made Haris, Harichandan angry also. As the anger, angered Harichandan was about to speak to Sri Maharaj Prataparuja personally stopped him. The King Prataparuja said, you are very fortunate. You've been graced by the touch of Sri Thakur. 
I'm not so fortunate, but you should feel very much obliged to him. <clears throat> uh, the car came to a complete standstill and remained immobile, while Lord Jagannath, with unblinking eyes, watched the dancing of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. How many of you have been to Jagannath Puri or Rathgacha? And you see these uh, unblinking eyes of Lord Jagannath. You're finished. <laughs> when he comes out of the temple with all the Panda Bijay, they, he's coming like this, the Pandas are bringing him and he has to climb up to the uh, up the steps to the go sit on his rod and they carry him there. He may be round underneath. Somebody told me that he's like he's in a gamla or a, like a bowl thing. That's why he can they move him from one place and he was so he and he has like a big I think it's supposed to be a peacock tail. And there's a guy behind him with a bit of string and he's pulling it. So he's just going like this like the peacock dancing <laughs> and someone's pulling the string <clears throat> but when Jagannath comes out he first comes out the temple everybody's waiting and they uh, they have their gongs all the pandas and everyone's waiting thousands of people there and they've been looking looking and then suddenly it gets louder and louder and it comes and you can see the Jagannath's little then he actually comes out he's, he's, it's boom, 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 boom. And thousands of devotees all waiting to see Jagannath. Many of them have been there many days, many. And when Jagannath comes out and he's boom, he's throwing those big side long glances with unblinking eyes. You must get love of God. Eh? You must. If you experience it, you must get love of God. Especially that he's waiting for his devotees, the devotees are waiting for him. 15 days or more, he was in isolation. Now he's out and... Ah, yeah. I'm very merciful. Then the, uh, the Goddess of Fortune, Subhadra and Balaram, both felt great happiness in their hearts. Indeed, they were seen smiling at the dancing. <clears throat> Lord Chaitanya Mohi, he, he danced and jumped very high, and wonderful transformations indicating his divine ecstasy were seen in his body. All these symptoms were visible simultaneously. His skin erupted with goose pimples. His hairs on his body stood on end. The body resembled the shimali tree, that is a cotton tree with big spikes. His paws Goosebumps, well, we have little goosebumps sometimes, he has like spikes from the shimali tree. Indeed, the people became afraid just to see his teeth chatter. They thought his teeth were going to fall out and break. Sri uh, <clears throat> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's whole body flowed with perspiration and at the same time, blood oozed out. And he made sounds, Jaga, Gaga, Jaja, Gaga, Jagannath. <laughs> but he's saying, Jaja, Gaga, Jaja, Gaga, in his ecstasy. Tears came forcibly from his eyes, as if from a syringe, and all the people around him got wet. Everyone saw his complexion of his body, it changed from white to pink. Uh, so that his luster resembled that of a malika flower. That's a little flower on the creeper. We get white ones and pink ones. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's body was like him. <clears throat> sometimes he appeared stunned and sometimes rolled on the ground. Indeed, sometimes his legs and hands became as hard as dry wood and he did not move. When he fell to the ground, sometimes his breathing almost stopped. Then the devotees saw saw this, when the devotees saw this, their lives also became very feeble.
The water flowed from his eyes and sometimes through his nostrils. Foam fell from his mouth and these flowings appeared to be torrents of nectar descending from the moon. The foam fell from the mouth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It was taken and drunken by Shubananda because he was very fortunate and expert in relishing the mellows of ecstatic love of Krishna. After Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had performed his devastating dance for some time, <coughs> his mouth, sorry, his mind entered into the mood of ecstatic love. After abandoning the dancing, the Lord ordered Srup Damodar to sing. Understanding his mind, Srup Damodar began to sing as follows. Now I have gained the Lord of my life, in whose absence I was being burned by Cupid and withered away. This song refers to Sri Radharani's meeting Krishna at the holy place of Kuruketra, where Lord Sri Krishna and his brother and sister came to visit when there was a solar eclipse. It is a song of separation from Krishna. When Radharani met Krishna at Kuruketra, she remembered, remembered his intimate associates in Vrindavan, and she thought, Now I have gained the Lord of my life. In his absence, I was being burned by the arrow of Cupid, and thus was withering away. But now I have gained my life again. When this refrain was loudly sung by Sri Dhammadha, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, again began rhythmically dancing in transcendental bliss. Uh, the car of Lord Jagannath began to move slowly while the son of Mother Sachi went ahead and danced in front. While dancing and singing, all the devotees in front of Lord Jagannath kept their eyes on him. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then went to the end of the procession with the Sankatan performers. With his eyes and mind fully absorbed in Lord Jagannath, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to play the drama of the song with his two arms. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dramatically acting the song, he would sometimes fall behind the procession. At that time, Lord Jagannath would come to a standstill. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again went forward, Lord Jagannath's car would again slowly start. So there was a sort of a competition between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Jagannath in seeing who would lead. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so strong that he made Jagannath wait in his car. While Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing, his ecstasy changed. Raising his two arms, he again recited the following verse in a loud voice. That very personality who stole away my heart during my youth is now again my master. These are the same moonlit nights of the month of Choitra. The same fragrance of malati flowers is there, and the same sweet breezes are blowing from the Kadamba forest. In our intimate relationship, I am also the same lover. Yet, my mind is not happy here. I am eager to go back to that place on the bank of the Reva under the, Vet Sat the Vedasi tree. That is my desire. This verse was recited by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again and again, but for Sri Dhammada, no one could understand its meaning. I've already explained this verse, but now I shall describe it in brief. Formerly, when all the gopis of Vrindavan were very pleased when they met Krishna at the holy place of Guru Ketra. Similarly, after seeing Lord Jagannath, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu awoke with the ecstasy of the gopis. Being absorbed in his ecstasy, he asked Sri Damodar to sing the refrain. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke thus to Lord Jagannath, You are the same Krishna, and I am the same Radharani. We are meeting again in the same way as we met in the beginning of our lives. Although we are both the same, my mind is still attracted to Vrindavan Dham. I wish that you will please 
again appear with your lotus feet in Vrindavan. In Kuruketra, there are crowds of people, elephants and horses, and also the rattling of chariots. But in Vrindavan, there are flower gardens, and the humming of bees and the chirping of birds can be heard. Here at Kuruketra, you are dressed like a royal prince, accompanied by great warriors. But in Vrindavan, you appeared just like an ordinary cowherd boy, accompanied only by your beautiful flute. There isn't even a drop of mercy. There is not even a drop of the ocean of transcendental happiness that I enjoyed with you in Vrindavan. Therefore, I request you to come to Vrindavan and enjoy pastimes with me. If you do so, my ambition will be fulfilled. <clears throat> In this ecstatic mood, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recited many other verses, but people in general could not understand their meaning. So this is also described in the Brahm, uh, in the Navadip Dhammaatmya, Bhakti uh, Nautakur. Uh, sorry, in the Navadip Bhavataranga. Bhavataranga. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he left <coughs> to took sannyas. <coughs> he took sannyas, so he went to live in Jagannath Puri for 12 years. Anyway, he came back to Vrinda, uh, to Mayapur on his way to Advaita's house after taking sannyas. So he didn't actually go, he, he stopped in, at the uh, Vijay Chaspati's house, which was on the border of Kolati, uh, uh, Kolati, and the other side, another bit. So, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came in and he gave a darshan to the devotees. The word got round Mahaprabhu is back, he's back. What? Everybody just fled to. I just cut his house. And Mahapu went on the rooftop and he gave him a darshan. This is when he had taken sannyas. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur is pointing out in the Baba Taranga there. He, here you are, my lord. I, I want to see you. And, and at, at, uh, I see you at, on the house, on the rooftop of Shibat, uh, Rajaspati's house. You're the same Krishna, you're, you're my same worshipful Lord, I know that. But here, you're just like a sannyasi. You have a short piece of cloth on you, white cloth. Your beautiful hair is been shaved off. And you're my same Lord, but my heart wants to take you back to Sri Vashangam, on the bank of the Ganga, where we were performing our nocturnal kirtans. We, we don't like to see you like this as a sannyasi. We want to see you with your beautiful long hair and your golden robes flying and your flower garlands. And this, is, this is our heart's desire. So, no. Yeah, so there, there is, this mood is being expressed also here in Kola Dvipa. <clears throat> so, Uh, Radharani was saying this to Krishna, or Mahaprabhu was saying to Jagannath. Jagannath is Krishna, Radharani is Mahaprabhu is Radharani. So you're the same Krishna, the same Krishna, the same moonlit night, the same month, the same flute you had. Uh, not same, but. Uh, <coughs> But we don't like to see you like this, Krishna. You're just like a prince, a warrior. You've got armor, armories and things like that. We want to see you in Vrindavan. That is our desire. So please finally come back and place your lotus feet. So this is the meaning of Ratyacha. Where Radharani is begging Krishna, you please come back. Hope against hope. How can 16,000 queens go to Vrindavan? It's going to... <laughs> 
he kind of rasa basa there. Uh, but anyway, there is a hope. So this longing is there. You please come back. And Bhakti Thakur also expressed <clears throat> one time that I want to do my bhajan there in Kuruketra. Uh, uh, some disciples of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, they found that quote, and they, so they asked Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, what, well, what is the meaning of this? Why he wants to do bhajan in Kuruketra? The Gaudiya Bhaktas, they want to be in Vrindavan or Mayapur or Jagannath Puri. Why Guru Ketra? And he said, because in Guru Ketra, this is the situation of Radharani. Uh, this is her, her, her mental condition. She's, you're, she's with you, but you're in Guru Ketra and she wants to take you back uh, to Vrindavan. It's hope against hope. It's impossible, practically, but they, somehow or another, maybe there could be a little, little chance, but actually hope against hope. So her heart is in a very, very delicate situation. And so Bhakti Nautaku said, if I can serve Shimata Radharani like that and please her a little bit while she's in this, uh, she, she's, she's in, this, in, the, in, in this mood, I can console her and help her a little bit, then she will be very pleased. She can, I can again the mercy of Sri Madhurani by pleasing her in her con, helping her in her condition and give her some uh, relief. Then she can sense you'll be pleased to bless me. We want the blessings of Radharani <laughs> so we can please Krishna. Uh, so Bhakti Thakur is also expressing that same uh, mood there. The Gopi spoke this thus, Dear Lord, whose neighbor is just like a lotus flower, your lotus feet are the only shelter for those who have fallen into this deep well of material existence. Your feet are worshipped and meditated on by great mystic yogis and highly advanced philosophers. We wish that those lotus feet may also be awakened within our hearts. Although we are only ordinary persons, engaged in household affairs. Speaking in the mood of Sri Mata Radharani, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, For most people, the mind and heart are one. But because my mind is never separ separated from Vrindavan, I consider my mind and Vrindavan to be one. My mind is already in Vrindavan, and since you like Vrindavan, will you place your lotus feet there? I will deem that your full mercy. My dear Lord, kindly hear my true submission. My home is in Vrindavan, and I wish your association there. But if I do not get it, then it would be very difficult for me to keep my life. My dear Krishna, formerly when you were staying in Mathura, you sent Uddhava to teach us, to teach me speculative knowledge and mystic yoga, and now you yourself are speaking the same things, but my mind does not accept it. There is no place in my mind for jnana yoga or dhyana yoga. Although you know this very well, you are still treating, instructing me in jnana and dhyana. This is not right for you to do so. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued, I would like to withdraw my consciousness from you and engage in materialistic activities. But even though I try, I cannot do so. I'm naturally inclined to you only. Your instructions for me to meditate are therefore simply ludicrous. In this way, you are killing me. It is not very good for you to think me of me as a candidate for your instructions. The gopis are not like mystic yogis. They will never be satisfied simply by meditating on your lotus feet and imitating so-called yogis. Teaching the gopis about meditation is another kind of duplicity. When they are instructed to undergo mystic yogic practice, they are not at all satisfied. 
On the contrary, they became more angry with you. The gopis have fallen into the great ocean of separation and are being devoured by the timingular fish of their ambition to serve you. The gopis are delivered from the mouths of the timingula fish, for they are pure devotees. Since they have no material conception of life, why should they aspire for liberation? The gopis do not want that liberation desired by yogis and jnanas. They are already liberated from the ocean of material existence. It's amazing that you have forgotten the land of Vrindavan. And how is it you have forgotten your father, your mother, and friends? How is it you have forgotten the Govardhan Hill, the bank of the Jamuna, and the forest where you enjoy the Rasalila dance? Krishna, you are certainly a refined gentleman with all good qualities. You are well behaved, soft hearted, and merciful. You know that there is not even a tinge of fault to be found in you. Yet, your mind does not even remember the inhabitants of Vrindavan. This is only my misfortune and nothing else. I do not care for my personal unhappiness. But when I see the morose face of Mother Jasoda and the hearts of all the inhabitants of Vrindavan breaking because of you, I wonder whether you want to kill them all or do you want to enliven them by coming here? Why are you simply keeping us alive in a state of suffering? The inhabitants of Vrindavan do not want you dressed like a prince, nor do they want to associate with great warriors in a different country. They cannot leave the land of Vrindavan, and without you, without your presence, they are all dying. What is their condition to be? My dear Krishna, you are the life and soul of Vrindavan Dham. You are especially the life of Nanda Maharaj and the only opulence in the land of Vrindavan. You are the only opulence in the land of Vrindavan and you are very merciful. Please come and let the residents of Vrindavan live. Kindly keep your lotus feet again in Vrindavan. After hearing Srimad Radharani's statements, Lord Krishna's love for the inhabitants of Vrindavan was evoked and his body and mind became very much perturbed. After hearing of their love for him, he immediately thought to himself to be always indebted to the residents of Vrindavan. Then Krishna began to pacify Srimad Radharani as follows. My dear Srimad Radharani, Please hear from me, I'm speaking the truth. I cry day and night simply upon remembering all you inhabitants of Vrindavan. No one knows how unhappy this makes me. Krishna continued, All the inhabitants of Vrindavan Dham, my mother, father, cowherd boyfriends, and everything else are like my life and soul. And among them all the inhabitants of Vrindavan, the gopis are my very life and soul. And among the gopis, you, Srimati Radharani, are the chief, and therefore you are the very life of my life. My dear Srimati Radharani, I am always subservient to the loving affairs of all of you. I am under your control only. My separation from you, from the residents of my separation from you and residence in a distant place have a cure due to my strong misfortune. When a woman is separated from the man she loves and the man is separated from the beloved woman, neither of them can live. It is a fact that they only live for each other. And if one dies the other he and the other hears of it, he or she will surely die also. Such a loving chaste wife and husband desire all welfare for each other in separation and they do not care for personal happiness. Desiring only each other's well-being, that such a pair certainly meet again 
without delay. You are my most dear and I know in my absence you cannot live for a moment. Just to keep you living, I worship Lord Narayana. By his mercy and potency, I come, I come to Vrindavan every day and enjoy pastimes with you. I then return to Dwarka Dham. And thus you can always feel my presence in Vrindavan. Our love is more powerful because of my good fortune in receiving Narayana's grace. This allows me to come there unseen by others. I hope that, it, that very soon I shall be able to become visible to everyone. I've already killed all the mischievous demons who are enemies of the Jadu dynasty. I've also killed Kamsa and his allies. There are two or four more demons still living. I want to kill them. And after doing so, I shall return very soon to Vrindavan. Please know this for certain. I wish to protect the inhabitants of Vrindavan from attacks of my enemies. That is why I remain in my kingdom where I am indifferent to my royal position. Whatever wives and sons and wealth I maintain in the kingdom are only for the satisfaction of the Jadus. Your loving qualities also attract me to Vrindavan. Indeed, they will bring me back within 10 or 20 days. <clears throat> and when I return, I shall enjoy both day and night with you and all the damsels of Brajabhumi. While speaking to Srimad Radharani, Krishna became very anxious to re return to Vrindavan. <clears throat> he made her listen to a voice which banished all her difficulties and which assured that she would again attain Krishna. Lord Krishna said, Devotional service to me is the only way to attain me. My dear gopis, whatever love and affection you have attained for me by good fortune is the only reason for my returning to you. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would sit in his room with Sri Gnamadur and taste the topics of these verses day and night. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, completely absorbed in ecstatic emotion. While looking at the face of Lord Jagannath, he danced and recited these verses. Jagannath Swami Ki Jai. So here we we'll see. Uh, the plight of Lord Krishna. They were. Uh, uh, she said, previously, Krishna, you sent a message with Uddhava to Vrindavan. Because he promised to come back immediately from um, he promised to come back from a tour immediately within a few days, but he didn't come. So then he sent a message with Uddhava. And Uddhava had to read the message. Because Krishna couldn't read it properly, his hands were shaking so, in emotion. So Uddhava sent this letter. He's, my dear gopis, my dear friends, you should know that separation between ourselves is impossible at any time, at any place or any circumstances, because I am all-pervading. So think of me being all-pervading and you will not be separated. So this is Gyan, this is what the, the Gyan is. That's their goal, they want to understand the all-pervasive nature. Uh, and then you tell us, now you're telling us, you just meditate on me within the heart, and this way you will be with me. You're, you're treating us like common jnanis and yogis. We're, we've been accustomed to love you from the very beginning of our lives. And you're just treating us like common jnanis and common yogis. 
This is not proper for you, Krishna. <clears throat> So, but Krishna was coming there, he meant, he says, I come every day, we do rasa dance. On the poor Nima, we have a rasa dance. And I am there with you, but because I, you always think of me, you're always constantly thinking of me. You don't know whether, when I appear before you, you think, and when, when I leave, you think, was Krishna, was he here? It felt like he was here. We were dancing and everything. He was here, was he here? But because they're thinking of Krishna all the time, when he comes, they don't know. <laughs> Krishna's always there. <clears throat> so he's saying, by the grace of the Lord Narayana, I've got some benediction, I can come unseen by others. <clears throat> so, Another important point is that uh, Lord Krishna said, devotional service to me is this is uh, 157, text 157. I wish to protect the inhabitants of Vrindavan from the attacks of my enemies. That is why I remain in the kingdom Otherwise, I am indifferent to my royal position. Whatever wives, sons, and wealth I maintain in the kingdom are only for the satisfaction of the Jado dynasty. So here Krishna is saying that he, the only reason that Krishna is there is for the members of the Jado dynasty. Krishna, he never takes one footstep out of Vrindavan. His happiness is in Vrindavan. It's not anywhere else. So when Krishna leaves Vrindavan, it's not for his own happiness, it's for the happiness of the others, specifically here. No. Whatever wives and sons and wealth I maintain in the kingdom are only for the satisfaction of the Yadu dynasty. He said, I want to stay at the Yadu dynasty, think I'm their <coughs> relative, I'm friend, cousin. <coughs> Great. And they know I'm the super soul because sometimes I show them I've got forearms. And they're great. Great. He's, he's joined the Jado dynasty. We're all the same clan, having God in your same clan. <laughs> he's great. So they want to keep him there in Dwarka, in, in the Jado dynasty, in Mathura. So Krishna's obliged to stay there with them, to satisfy all the other. But he said, actually, my heart is not there. And my love is in, with you in Vrindavan. Same thing Krishna says to uh, Nanda Baba uh, when they went to kill Kamsa, then Krishna said, I want to stay a few days. But he promised to go back to Vrindavan, so Krishna said, no, I, my father, he wants to give me an education, Vasudev, and do things as the father does with his son. He didn't have the opportunity because he was separated from Krishna. So to give my father and mother some some happiness and the, and the other residents of Dwarkapuri, uh, this is the only reason I'm staying here. But my happiness is only with in in. in in Vrindavan. <clears throat> uh, so this is the original form of Krishna, who never takes a footstep outside of Vrindavan. This is who we are dealing with here. This is being revealed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> it is uh, dealings with Lord Jagannath. That that original Krishna never steps out of Vrindavan. His happiness is in Vrindavan. He doesn't need to go outside. He doesn't want to go outside. And he never goes outside. But Rupa Goswami said, sometimes it's necessary to kill the demons, etc. Yeah. <clears throat> go outside. Uh, but the original Krishna, he never takes one footstep out from Vrindavan.
สิร์แอนรัตยาเฉพาะชอบกี้ so this rat the actor this rat the originally the original rat was built from uh, Dadichi's bones you know the story of Dadichi and they had to get his bones to make a weapon to kill r i t a s h o r a something like that so there was some Bones were left over, so different things were made. Arjuna got something from that weapon, of it. and they, they made a, a, a rat, which they kept in the heavenly planets. So in the i n d u d u m n a l e l a and Maharaj, i n d u d u m n a l e l a in bringing Lord Jagannath, n i l m a t a v and Jagannath, <coughs> then. Yeah, they, uh, and when it was time for the r a t h y a t r a Jagannath was there, appeared there in these wonderful forms. Now they were going to celebrate the r a t h y a t r a first r a t h y a t r a So they bought that bone chariot from the heavenly planets, and that was Dadichi's bones. I guess after it went back, because now they make it, they make it from wood, the chariots. Uh, but the original one was uh, Dadichi's bones. <coughs> I had an experience with it, with c h a g a n a t h one time. So I have a connection with c h a g a n a t h Krishna conscious. <laughs> um, somebody gave me a piece of paper and it said there's a festival in b u b a n e s h w a r somewhere like that, Puri. I was on the train with Pankajangri, and we were going to Banaras. And uh, I said, "Pangadhari, look, I got a little pamphlet. It says there's a, some kind of festival. It's going to have a look." Pangadhari said, "No, I'm not going." I, I went there last year, and I got somebody ripped my bag off or something. Like that. I said, "Okay, I'll see you in Banaras." So I'm going to have a look. I jumped off the train, went to. Uh, And it happened to be c h a g a n a t h Puri, and it happened to be at the a t r a festival. And I didn't know anything about it, but um, anyway, I, I I was waiting to for all the people to get off the train, and then I would wait a little while. Then I would go because I didn't have a ticket, so wait till all the guards went, <laughs> ticket inspector went, then I would go. So everybody, all the train people. Then I went down, and the policeman saw me. He came. He said, "Where's your ticket?" I said, "It's in my bag." He said, "Let me have a look." I said, "No." He said, "You should show me if you've got a ticket." I said, no, "I'm not going to show you." <laughs> so I thought, "Oh my God! You know, I'm going to get, now. They're going to arrest me for having a ticket. I'm going to go through all that. They're going to put me in the cell for a few days, question me all these. Oh, all well, this hassle is going to happen." So I decided walking fast towards the ticket inspector, the gate. And the, the policeman was <laughs> coming behind me, also getting closer and closer. And there was a ticket inspector was there, and the, the policeman was closer and closer. And I, oh my God, I'm not going to get a, get out of this one. I got right to the ticket inspector's office, and on the right there was a door, and I went in the door, and, and I was in a restaurant. It was in <laughs> the, the cop, the policeman he didn't see me. <laughs> So I went, and then I opened the door on the other side. And I ran, ran down the road, and <laughs> yeah, no one was coming. And I, went, and I went, wow, beautiful place here. All the little pukkos I was walking through, and that's such a nice vibration here. c h a g a n a t h Puri d a m Ki Jai, and uh, oh, it's so beautiful here. I feel all my anxieties; they all disappeared as soon as. Then I took some chapati and sabji. Mm, never tasted such nectar. Checking up Puri Mahaprasad ki. It's all prasad and all the food in. <laughs> Checking up Puri. I never tasted such nectar. Wow, me! And I didn't know anything about checking up. 
Anyway, it was Rath Yatra, so I, I could see Lord Jagannath Balaram and, and pulling the car, thousands of people, Jai, Jai Jagannath, Jai Jagannath. I just imitated what everyone else was doing. Jai Jagannath, Jai Jagannath. Everyone was laughing. I said, what are you laughing at? I said, this is Balaram. Chanting Jai Jagannath. I said, who's Balaram? And uh, the devotees were there. Hare Krishna Ki, Jai. Prabhupada's devotees were there. Dindanath, Anwar Swami was there. Teacher like uh, Bihari Lal. Jai Pitakamaraj just left apparently. So, right there in the presence of Lord Jagannath. And I saw the devotee, oh, it's Hare Krishna. I've seen him a couple of times in London. I used to do the nightclubs, they were very popular. So I've seen them a few times, but I never spoke to them. So I, like, I now I had a lot of questions. I've been in India maybe over a year by then, so I've been gathering, looking for self-realization. So I had a lot of questions. I was a high Krishnas. I lost it, questions. So I, up I go. Why are you chanting Hare Krishna? He, um, in, the, in the, according to Hindu philosophy, we have Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, and Brahma, Shiva, Vishnu, creator, maintainer, and destroyer. This is the conception, the topmost conception of God in Hinduism. I'm speaking like that. <laughs> My understanding. So why you don't chant Ram, uh, why don't you chant Brahma, Shiva and Vishnu also? And that the devotee and he was he was a new bhakta. <coughs> His name was Piharila. He said we chant Krishna's name because Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. And Oh, gee, nobody ever told me that before. <laughs> I've been speaking so many sadhus, so many... Nobody ever told me God was a person before. And here they are, first thing, a new Bhaktika. Krishna is the Supreme Person of God. I, I was in Hirishikesh with, what's that, I, uh, Divine Light Mission, and he used to sit on the... Swami used to sit on the bank of the Kanga with a lot of foreign disciples or followers. Brahmin Sanyasi, born in India, but he could not tell me. New Bhakta, uh, associated with Prabhupada for a little while, he knew. The other big Swamis, they don't know. I immediately accepted Krishna consciousness. Everything that my understanding. When I relate it, I can see it. Yeah, just relating all of my unanswered questions <coughs> and. Uh, uh, through Prabhupada's books and uh, questions I was asking the devotees, they were answering me from Prabhupada's, these, all these answers were coming from Prabhupada and Prabhupada's books. <clears throat> exactly what I wanted to know, exactly the realized wherever I was, realization I was, everything he tallied so uh, perfectly with Prabhupada's books. Saviour of the ball, Prabhupada Ki Jai. And the right in front of Lord Jagannath. So, I was uh, thinking I got a lot of mercy there. Jagannath and Balaram, so much there.
And after I was thinking, but, uh, uh, I was in uh, Madurai, <coughs> just coming up, when we were coming up to Puri. And uh, I was reflecting my travels in India. And uh, Madurai, Menachi Temple is a <coughs> famous temple. There's so many gods and goddesses. And I was watching all the pilgrims, they were coming in, and, mm -hmm, turning around in circles. And, and I thought, you know, it seems like it's a mythology, this Hinduism. I thought it's pretty good. I had a good time. But I don't think I'm going to find the answer in Hinduism. So I thought the answer must be in Zen, the void philosophy. So I thought I finished my searching in you. I had a good, it was good, but I'm not going to get it. So somehow or another, I was going to say, I was going to go over to Japan and get into some Zen monastery. And, and uh, Prabhupada says in one purport that when a person becomes frustrated about maintaining a form after leaving the body, and I can't remember which purport is. Uh, then he takes, to, when he comes frustrated, then he takes to some kind of voidist philosophy. Oh, oh, that was me. That was right by the time I was frustrated. I'm not going to find it in India. I'm see if I can get it in Japan. Uh, yeah, so it, exactly where I was. Well, Papa, he told he told us exactly everything, but too. So, yeah, out of frustration, they would turn to some voidist philosophy. I was just about to do that. Then Jack not save me from void, from being a voidist. Uh, but I was talking to one person in, in, in Manakshi. Uh, anyway, it's the same thing. Uh, but I was, when I was reflecting later on, Uh, I could see how Krishna's hand was there, and so you can, you come to search for God, have a good look, <laughs> have a good look. <laughs> so then when you're frustrated, when you finally give up, okay, you, you had a good look, you could find me? <laughs> okay, now you're frustrated, now meet my devotees. This is the uh, I got from Krishna. You're trying as hard as you can. Okay, did you get it? To find God by your own, yeah, meet devotees. Devotees is the only way you're going to understand. So, that you're, so I took it, I, the picture was like that. I tried. Well, Jagannath's mercy comes through different ways. I went, when I got there, I bought, I, first to Puri, I, was, I went to the temple, I was at Lion's Gate, the other main temple in front. Walk in a beautiful temple there. I walk from a long distance, I could see it. I was walking. Right. So I would visit all the temples. And I went into the Lion's Gate entrance, and all of a sudden, I was about 10 foot back, and there was a cop, policeman, uniform. You can't come in here. I was, I was, I was really surprised. Not more than surprised. How I got, he came and pushed me, he really just, I, I jumped back about 10 foot, I think. But he's really aggressive. He pushed me back, you can't come in here. I was angry. I said, you think God's, I can only be known in a brown skin and some paint, paint on your face? It doesn't, God, God lives in, in the heart of those with a brown skin and painted face. Oh, he chased me away. I said, I'm going to get in another gate then. I went around the other side. I went around all four gates, but the, as soon as they saw me, they'd run out to chase me. Anyway, I took it, I took it as mercy. Later on, I heard that 
This is one of the symptoms in Vrindavan that my friend Padmaloch Prabhu explained to me. He stayed there a long, long time. He said, when the new Babaji's are coming to take residence in Vrindavan, they're going to say, Madhukari, they're going to spend their life in Vrindavan. Uh, yeah, the first thing when they go, they're going Madhukari, and the, the, the little kids, they see, there's a new, new Baba is coming, it's a new Baba coming. So they throw stones at him. <laughs> they throw stones. And uh, the, the saying is that if you do that, they go, then they pelt you with stones. It's a good sign. It means that Krishna is accepting you. You can come and stay in Vrindavan. You can do Madhukari. <laughs> After a while, they will stop throwing stones when they know you. So I, I took it like that. The Lord Chakna gave me a welcome. <laughs> Not this paper there. Gave me a welcome to the Puri Dharma. Anyway, a few years later, I, I embraced Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> With the uh, Radha Nath Maharaj and Dutumna Maharaj and Bhakti Tru Maharaj. He had to go, he said, come early in the morning, we will give you. When, when Jagannath was at the Gundicha, they had to stay outside for a few days so we can get past. He said, come early in the morning, so we went really early. I mean, then he was calling us up one at a time. Because... <clears throat> yeah, and we could go right up. And then the pandas, they push you on. They embrace, embrace Jagannath, embrace him. <laughs> push your head <laughs> hard on his... Anyway, Jagannath is very merciful. What the deity shouldn't be seen by lower animals or low class men, that is an injunction. But Jagannath, he transcends all that. He comes out, anybody can see him, the Malachas, <laughs> anyone can see him. The, the dogs are there. Yeah, the the, male, the um, those with leprosy, they can't walk like it, but they, they they kind of drag along behind Jagannath. It's pitiful to see, but at least they take a police shot of Jagannath. They're all like, and they they kind of behind the car. They know, at least they have knowledge that they're suffering from previous activity, but they take shelter of Jagannath. But Jagannath gives you shelter to everyone in. Even the dogs are there, they can, see, they can see him on the car, everybody can see him. Jagannatha Swami Nayana Patagami Babahatmi. So he will see you. When will your, where did that prayer, when will your glance of mercy fall across my path? Or oh, when will I fall across your glance? Yeah. Jagannath Swami Ki, Sri Prabhupada Ki, Sampeda Bhaktivinda Ki, Jagannath Swami Ki, Hare Krishna.